Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to discuss about an important topic from digital signal processing called sampling. And previous lecture we already seen that it's obvious to convert from or to switch from continuous time signal to discrete time signal. But here we'll see how actually we can represent a continuous time signal into its discrete form with the help of a sampling theorem. So let us start with the first point of discussion that is what actually mean by sampling. So here you can see the process of representing a continuous time signal into discrete time form is called as sampling. So we can say or we can simply narrate sampling is any process that represents a continuous time signal into its discrete form that we call it as sampling. Now in order to prove this how can we convert a continuous time signal into discrete time we will come across sampling theorem. So let us concentrate on what actually the statement is. So the statement is a continuous time signal may be completely represented in its samples and it can be recovered back that means a discrete time signal can be again represented in continuous form if the sampling frequency that is fs should be greater than or equals to 2 times fm. Now what actually fs is? So fs is nothing but the sampling frequency or the rate at which we are sampling that particular continuous time signal and this fm simply stands for the maximum frequency present in the given signal. So with reference to the maximum frequency component present in the signal and the sampling frequency that we are considering we can convert a continuous time signal into its discrete form. Now let us come across how to prove or how to check the conversion of continuous into its discrete form. So for that case let us assume that we have a continuous time signal which is given as x of t which is band limited that means its spectrum is band limited to fm hertz. Now it simply says that we have to consider one signal continuous time signal whose none of the frequency component is should be greater than fm hertz. So for that case I am simply assuming that we have that particular component or signal as here we will draw it in a proper way. Let's suppose this is uh, time period t and x axis and x of t on y axis. So I am simply considering that let this is this kind of signal is available with us. So here it is like this. We can assume any kind of signal. This is going to be our continuous time signal as x of t. Now if I want to represent this in terms of its frequency component that is we have seen that it should not be greater than fm hertz. So if I take or represent its Fourier transform which is a standard way of representing it I can write x of omega as on x axis now we can have frequency component as omega and the stipulated form of such kind of signal when we go for Fourier transform or representing a continuous into discrete so we can get a shape maybe in a form like this one this is the standard way of representing any kind of signal now here this particular component will be positive so I can write this as fm and this will be at the negative side so we can write minus fm that means the total frequency component should not be greater than fm hertz so it is band limited in between the fm hertz so this is our first term that we have considered as continuous time signal now in order to sample this continuous time signal into its discrete form we need a signal that can sample this particular component so for that case I am assuming that we have a train of impulse function I am writing it here unit impulse function now we know very well about unit impulse function that always represented in a form of delta t and it has a property that it will be in existence only for t is equals to 0 otherwise its amplitude is going to be zero. Now if it is there I am simply considering a train of impulse functions that simply indicates the given impulse function will be periodic in nature. So for that case let's suppose this is our first sample at zero. Next at equal interval we are considering let these are the samples of impulse function. Similarly to the left side also we can consider these are the samples of the impulse function. Now you can see it here 
it simply shows they are periodic in nature with the time duration as ts that means the given impulse function repeats itself after every ts second so here simply will write del ts of t now in order to generate a discrete time samples or discrete time signal we can multiply uh, the given function x of t with del t s of t and that i am writing mathematically as let g of t be any signal which is obtained by multiplying the input signal with impulse strain as del t s of t now here we have to multiply these two signals so again i can write it here as a block or a simply a term called as multiplier to which we have two input functions the first signal is x of t and the other one is impulse strain del t s of t and whose corresponding result as usual it is going to be g of t now let's suppose we are starting from this particular term here and we are ending at this particular term now if it is a continuous time signal definitely uh, iska kuch value ho jayega aur iska kuch value hona bhi chahiye let's suppose uh, this is at 0 let's suppose this is as 1 and this is 2 this is minus 1 minus 2 वैसे अगर हम यहां पर 1 के लिए लेते हैं यहां पर 2 और यहां पर 3 के लिए लेते हैं तो हम कंसेक्यूटिवली मल्टीप्लाई करेंगे x of t with del t of t so let us start with this one now if i want to multiply this particular term from x of t with this term so obviously here the amplitude is 1 to ye amplitude 1 hai और यहाँ पर जो भी एम्पलीट्यूड रहेगा इन दोनों का हो जाएगा मल्टीप्लीकेशन सो यू नो दैट वन इन टू एनी थिंग इज गोइंग टू बी एनी थिंग सो बेस्ड ऑन दैट आई कैन गेट अ न्यू सिग्नल व्हिच इज जनरेटेड व्हेन आई मल्टीप्लाई दिस टू फंक्शंस इज गोइंग टू बी फॉर दिस पर्टिकुलर टर्म विल गेट ए फंक्शन लाइक दिस यू कैन टेक दिस पर्टिकुलर टर्म आई मे गेट अनदर वैल्यू विच विल बी लाइक दिस एंड दिस इज गोइंग टू बी द मैक्सिमम कॉम्पोनट so we can get a term like this one similarly if i take same value from here i can get a sample value like this if i take this particular term so we can get a value like this if i take this zero zero into this particular bar is going to be zero and lastly if i take this particular term so we may get a sample value like this one so when i multiply x of t with impulse strain i can get a function as g of t so this is going to be t and i am writing this as simply g of t now if you see this particular structure uh, if i connect all the peak values which i am connecting like this so i can get a similar same structure as x of t that means we have represented x of t in a form of its sample now if i take its fourier transform which we can consider as g omega or g of g omega we can write again on x axis we can have omega as frequency component and if you take its fourier transform it will be a sing function because it is periodic in nature and for that case we may get a schematic like this and similarly to the left side like this now these functions are going to be periodic so zero here i am writing fm here i am writing minus fm similarly here i can write two times fm and here i can write minus two times fm and this particular amplitude will be a divided by ts now how it comes a divided by ts the reason is uh, when we are converting any sing function uh, sinusoidal or periodic function it can be represented in the form of sing function uh, that you can see in my a uh, couple of uh, previous videos also so it is going to be a divided by ts now from that case diagrammatically we come to a conclusion that a continuous time signal can be represented in its discrete form now we'll go for its theoretical proof so for that case i am writing this impulse function del t s of t in terms of its fourier series coefficient the reason is uh, if a signal is periodic in nature it can be represented using fourier series coefficient so i'm writing it here the trigonometric fourier series representation of our impulse strain as del ts of t will be 
I can write this as del T s of T is equals to this is periodic with time period T s so it will be 1 upon T s into 1 plus 2 cos omega s t first frequency component similarly cos 2 omega s t second frequency component plus 2 cos 3 omega s t third frequency component and so on let's suppose this is our equation number one here we are represented impulse function in terms of its trigonometric Fourier representation so if it is there we'll go for the multiplication we have g of t which is obtained by multiplying x of t with del t s of t so simply if i multiply that term i can get 1 upon t s into this will be x of t plus 2 x of t into cos omega s t our fre first frequency component plus 2 x of t into cos 2 omega s t plus 2 x of t into cos 3 omega s t so many upper you like the hai how much we can get equation number second up here agar equation number second hai so, हम अगर इसका ले लेते हैं फोरियर ट्रांसफॉर्म यानी कि g of t का फोरियर ट्रांसफॉर्म जो है g of omega के फॉर्म में हम ले सकते हैं सो आई कैन राइट इट हियर नेक्स्ट स्टेप एज वी नो दैट g of t फोरियर ट्रांसफॉर्म हमने ये डायग्रामेटिक फॉर्म में भी देखा था अब यहां पर लिखेंगे थ्योरेटिकल फॉर्म में g of omega सिमिलरली x of t एक फंक्शन है हमारे पास तो इसका हम लिखेंगे फोरियर ट्रांसफॉर्म वो हो जाएगा x of omega अब ये इस टर्म्स का भी हम फोरियर ट्रांसफॉर्म ले लेते हैं सो वी कैन राइट फोरियर ट्रांसफॉर्म ऑफ 2 x of t into cos omega s t अगर हम इसका फोरियर ट्रांसफॉर्म लिखते हैं ये पीरियोडिक है यानी कि इट विल शिफ्ट टू द राइट एंड लेफ्ट साइड सो आई कैन राइट इट्स फोरियर ट्रांसफॉर्म एज x of omega minus omega s plus x of omega plus omega s सी यू कैन सी इट हियर the frequency component is omega s so it is shifted to the right as well as to the left side similarly for next components 2x of t cos 2 times omega s t liya hai to iska bhi four year transform hum likhenge x omega minus 2 omega s plus x omega plus 2 omega s and meanwhile we can write for the entire terms ab hum isko substitute karenge equation number 2 mein. that means its four year transform to ye aa jayega g of omega is equal to we will get this term 1 by t s as it is x of t ka Fourier transform hai x of omega baad me likhenge sub terms ko which is tarah se ye sub periodic form mein hai to humne isko likha hai plus up to infinity ab agar hum isko uh, properly realize karenge to ab dekh sakte hai Every time this frequency component x of omega is shifted to the left or right side by certain amount of time. Now we will realize this in terms of omega s frequency component. What is the value of omega s value 0? That means its multiplication is 0. Here is minus, here is plus, here is minus 2, here is plus 2. So we will write this equation. लिख सकते हैं लाइक दिस g of omega is equals to 1 upon t s summation let's suppose the integer is n from minus 2 plus infinity और ये equation हो जाएगा x of omega minus I can write this as n into omega s let's suppose this is equation number 3 अब ये equation indicate क्या करता है आप देख सकते हैं n का वैल्यू जिस तरह से चेंज हो जाएगा पीरियोडिकली उस तरह से हमें ये पूरा का पूरा समेशन जो है वो मिल सकता है तो इट सिंपली इंडिकेट्स दैट द स्पेक्ट्रम ऑफ g ऑफ ओमेगा कंसिस्ट ऑफ x ऑफ ओमेगा व्हिच इज रिपीटेटिंग आई होप यू आर गेटिंग इट रिपीटेटिंग पीरियोडिकली विद ओमेगा s अब ओमेगा इसको इन टर्म्स ऑफ हम फ्रीक्वेंसी और टाइम पीरियड भी लिख सकते हो जैसे कि 2 पाई बाय टी एस या फिर 2 पाई इनटू एफ एस सो फ्रॉम दैट केस वी कैन कम टू ए कंक्लूजन दैट एवरी कंटिन्यूअस टाइम सिग्नल कैन बी रिप्रेजेंटेड इन इट्स डिस्क्रीट फॉर्म 
with the help of sampling theorem. So this is going to be the proof for our sampling theorem that is required in terms of or in case of digital signal processing. Thank you very much.